All right, welcome on in to another Last American Pubcast. This is episode 10. We appreciate you being here. This is Tom from America Floats. I'll let everybody else be introduced. This is Frank from Let's Be Frank. Hey Abby guys. Libby from Conspiracy Pilled. Mm -hmm. PJ from Wartime Propaganda. And oh. you know him from his many panel appearances, as well as his videos that expose the mainstream media's biased agenda. This is Ryan from Drone Tech, the Drone Tech channel. So thank you all for being here. And for all of you at home, watching and liking, subscribing and following, commenting along. Everybody say hello. Hey. Yo, yo, yo. Hey. It's great to see everybody. Hola. Okay, now I'm just going to say this right now. I can't hear you, so I'm going to jump and try to figure that out, and I'll be right back. <laughs> Bye, Tom. Good Bye, Tom. Right. Yeah. yeah. There we go. All right, buddy. Well, that was a fun That's show. Good. good night, everybody. All right. <laughs> I actually also have to jump really quick. And I'll be right back. It's the worst time for something to happen. But oh, Good night, everybody. Somebody came down to me and was like, hey, yeah. we need you real quick. So, <laughs> All right. We're losing everybody here tonight. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Bye, PJ. All right. Well, let's get going well, tonight uh, without <laughs> our uh, host that had to bail on us uh, out of all of a sudden. Uh, talking about what's currently going on, we've had a lot of issues. Hey, Tom, you back. Can you hear us? Tom? I don't know. Yeah, I can hear you. I'm good. Okay. I don't know what's going on there. It's really weird. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's great to see everybody. Great to see you. Great to have Ryan here tonight with us, uh, joining us to talk about things that are currently going on. And it just seems like it continues to get worse from week to week with this current regime and the way they've been going after their political opponents. And of course, it's always different when they do it. Right, Ryan? Yeah, yeah, always. Of course. I mean, that's what do you think? Like all the propaganda that we hear from a day to day basis, all of it is just meant for that. It's just meant to like. So when people come back at them like, oh, you're doing things that you said that were a danger to democracy. Oh, no, 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 no. It's because it's different. Yeah, there, there's there been a lot of stuff. We know we had the Biden's uh, speech from hell the other night where he was actually broadcasting from hell uh, and giving his speech to basically <laughs> It was a single for all of his supporters, and of course, uh, it was a prelude to what we've been seeing with the raid of, of Bannon, who they decided to go ahead and perp walk for aesthetic effect because that's what they want. This is a trial run, a dry run, if you will, for their attempt to arrest Trump before the midterms. I'm still going to stand by that. That is something I've been saying now for quite some time. I think you and I, uh, uh, Ryan, were on a panel together where we kind of discussed this about a year ago that this is oh, yeah. where we were kind of headed yeah oh yeah it's been i mean really you you could see this coming uh for the last 20 years probably i mean during the bush years anytime uh the gov you know there'd be a government shutdown or something like that they'd always blame the republicans always uh accuse them of being like suicide bombers and terrorists and then you know their opposition to obamacare they said you know republicans want you to die and uh uh they, they've been kind of leading up to this point for a while. It's been pretty clear to see that, you know, especially with the media being dominated clearly by Democrats, uh, it's been clear that they they eventually want to criminalize. I know that sounds crazy, but they want to cr criminalize uh, the Republican Party. And I've talked about it before that, you know, the Republicans are always accused of being authoritarians or Trump. The thing is, and I'm not an expert on this, but if you if you look at people who are, they'll they'll tell you that. You need an authoritarian needs a, a support base, an institutional support base in order to, you know, help them be authoritarians. And Republicans and, and Trump don't have that. Biden Democrats do. And that should, I think, scare people, especially since they're, we're so used to them accusing us of what they're engaged in. And so if they're accusing us of being authoritarians, then, you know, it's probably because that's what they're doing. According to the most recent comments on our She-Hulk video, though, there is no such thing as left wing media. So, ah, uh, yeah. yeah. It, it well, yeah, exist. because it's not straight up communist, like <laughs> Stalinist propaganda. I mean, it's right. close, yeah. but well, according to what is it? Who's it? Ibram X. Kendi in his book. If he, if you want to fight today's racism, you're going to have to project your racism into the future. If you want to fix last year's racism, you got to be racist today. So if they're going to tell you right now, you're a racist, therefore they can be racist against you to you. Uh, the next step is they call you an authoritarian. Now they get to be an authoritarian to stop you. Exactly. The rule is it doesn't exist. 
and it's good actually yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it- yeah well that's how that's the that's the pattern right it starts out oh no 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 there's this loud you know, uh, they get really outraged. This isn't happening. They're lying. It's all propaganda, especially with like Chris Rufo. You saw that. Oh, look at this quote. He said that he's making it up. But then, you know, pretty quickly it's, oh, well, but we need this. And then you have like Malcolm Nance and, and Ben Shapiro arguing over it. And you get these people who have no idea what CRT, they accuse us of that, but they don't really know what it is. You know, and they think it's history. It's teaching history and all this kind of thing. So, yeah, we had we had this moment where they tried to define what, the uh, the evil MAGA Republican is it's anybody that denies election results, anybody who um, riots or or uh, attacks police. Uh, but these are all of the same things that Democrats have done uh, for decades and up to recently uh, this last decade. And then of course we had a 2020 summer of love. You had Peter Ducey during the press conference with uh, Kareem diversity hire Jean Pierre the other day where he actually called her out on one of her tweets denying the election results of President Donald Trump, basically calling him a illegitimate uh so wouldn't that make her a threat to democracy yeah um i don't know if you guys want me to go i I definitely will though because for me this was like this was a big one i I had been wondering like why is nobody asking her about this it's an obvious question because it's out there it's public i I thought everybody knew about it and and i had actually tweeted like maybe uh three or four days before ducey asked and asking like why is nobody asking this question and um uh, what Besides the fact that she, you know, when it do it, it's a different one, we do it kind of a thing. What's really telling is how nobody else in the media has asked that or did like any kind of like real follow up or anything on that. It, like if these people were if it was a Republican up there, man, they would all be standing up and shouting and acting like they were activists, you know, uh, protesters like they did all through the Trump years. But there's none of that because they're not interested in pointing out that because they're just themselves. They're so invested in this narrative. They can't do it. Yeah. And we forget that it's not even just Trump. Like they were insisting that Bush stole 2000. And then (laughs) I need a beard. They were insisting that Bush stole 2000. And then 2004. Yeah. Wasn't that Biden's recent tweet? You know, you can't be you can't uh, love this country and also claim that we have unfair elections, you know, except in 2000, 2004 and 2016 and Georgia in 2018. Outside of that, though, you literally you just really can't question it. Yeah, even uh, even questioning the methods of vote counting, right? You you can't question the Dominion voting machines. You can't question uh, smart tech or anything like that, unless you're the Democrat who questioned about them in previous elections, saying that they you they could be issues in elections and that would cause them to be stolen. If 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 the Republicans win as much as they should in 2022, then voter fraud will be the new black in 2023. It'll be all the rage again. Oh yeah. Exactly. And we see this pattern over and over. It's that's it's it's got like a ga- I hate to say gaslighting because it's like overused now at this point, but it has like a gaslighting effect. You know what I mean? Like oh, when yeah. you, you have like the Bush years, they treat it one way and then you get Obama and it's like, oh, OK, now they overnight they've changed how they report on everything. Then you get to Trump and the same thing over and over. Uh, I mean, what do you guys think? Do you guys think that's on purpose? Do you, do you think they are trying to kind of poke us with that sort of thing? I don't know, maybe, or maybe they're just so disconnected from reality themselves. They just say whatever they want to say in the moment that's convenient. I feel like that's the question. It's like, do they know that they're lying? Do they know, like... (laughs) (laughs) Who is this? I have no idea what you're talking about. I feel like somebody's about to steal my bike, though. (laughs) Um... (laughs) I feel so uncomfortable right now. (laughs) It's just a do-rag. Uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I just like Very distracting. Like to me, it drives me crazy that like we have to listen to them talk about how violent. First of all, when Karen Jean Pierre gets up there and she's like, "How clear that they're being about everything." We're being clear. Biden's been clear when nothing about it is clear. It's all these kind of vague generalities that they're making with no examples to back up anything they're saying. And they keep accusing us of taking away rights, even though Republicans aren't the ones in power. You know, Democrats have been in charge of the country for two years. Uh, But then they, you know, they, oh, and Republicans are all about violence. Like all the biggest political violence that we've seen over the last seven years clearly has been from the left. I mean, even before the 2016 election, you had like mobs of people beating up Trump supporters like in San Jose. And then you had like the Democrat uh, who attacked the GOP baseball game while screaming, this is for health care. You know, that the FBI tried to claim that that was uh, uh, suicide by cop. 
Like, that's weird, right? Like, why was that not dug into more? Like, eventually, Ray admits, yes, it's domestic terrorism. But why did they not say that for so long? You know, it, obviously, because the media would have to ask, oh, who radicalized this guy? Oh, it was us. You know, that's not going to happen. Well, it's, like a <laughs> it's like a dampening effect. Hello. <laughs> PJ, I swear you're being robbed in the moment. We, we see Tim Pool I'm get swatted. We have people I'm, being robbed. I'm literally being robbed. Are you in California right now? Uh... <laughs> I, I'm not uh, saying any. Are you in a but... Chappelle sketch right now that we should be aware of? <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> you know, the, the left, the, the only way that the left's narrative works, though, is based on this victim mentality. So you're talking about, uh, you know, as as uh, Drone Tech said, they have to claim that they don't have institutional power while they run all the institutions. That's the, <laughs> that's the I'm sorry. I'm trying not to laugh and make a salient point. It's just not working. Uh, you know, somebody else just take it. My mic's going to cut out at some point again anyway. I'm, I'm pulling in these non-super chat beers because i just want to drink <laughs> abby when the super chat start nice. coming in, you're gonna be wasted by the end of the show tonight yeah i'm always wasted by the end of the show what are you talking about oh god i made sure that i started drinking right before i came on here because normally i'd have like maybe two before i get on it's like ah you're slurring your speech by like the second hour you know it's probably not a good idea we, we're like the founding fathers everything's in cursive including our speech so <laughs> Yeah, just super like the founding it's fathers. Yeah, yeah. The one thing that I uh, that I noticed over on your Twitter when you tweet out, uh, Ryan, is that you make it very clear about when there is something going on within a Democrat uh, regime. Currently, what we have here with Biden with the inflation and the food shortages, energy shortages, and and anything else that's uh, negative, it, it gets covered. But the Democrats are never attached to that coverage. Exactly. Yeah. And you saw that big time during the Obama years. That was a big thing. Um, I, I always when I talk about this, I use this example, but I went back and I looked during the whole kids in cages thing when that was going on. And I'm like, I seem to recall that there was some, you know, similar thing going on during the Obama years. You know, he built these thing, these places. And I started looking into it and I found I, I zeroed in on some NPR articles where they talked about the overcrowding. But I noticed nowhere in these articles did they ever mention Obama. It was always kind of vaguely government, you know, government this. And I actually reached out to one of the writers uh, on Twitter and she actually responded back. And her response, I thought, was so ridiculous. And I, I don't have it anymore because it was on a long band account now. But uh, uh, she basically said something to the effect of uh, the lawsuit that we were talking about did not mention Obama. And I'm like, but he it, he's the president. It's his centers. Like, and, and that's what we have to deal with. And then at the end of the Obama years, they say, oh, was scandal free president? Oh, well, because you didn't report any of the scandals like, oh, he's scandal free. And that's, still, what, that's another like just messed up thing is that they create this like alternate reality bubble, you know, where these things don't happen. And then they spend so much time calling us conspiracy theorists and demonizing us so that if anybody within their bubble does happen to see any of this information, they're just instantly going to discount it. They're still tweeting out the meme of Obama in a tan suit saying this was the worst uh, scandal of the Obama presidency. And it's like. I don't, I don't know how intellectually dishonest you could be, but that that pretty much goes right up to the line. Yeah, I mean, look how they freaked out about uh, P, like Barr, uh, not Barr, but uh, uh, Bannon ignoring congressional subpoenas and anybody else who did. And it's like, but Democrats set that precedent. Like Eric Holder had a congressional subpoena. Uh, he ignored it. And uh, <laughs> the devil knife. Uh, he yeah. ignored that congressional subpoena. And was he held accountable? No. When when they tried to hold him accountable, Democrats got up from the vote and walked out. And Obama and all these people were saying, oh, this is all political. It's just political witch hunt. And the media applauded, you know, oh, great job. This is great. This is American. And, and then so they set that precedent and then it continues happening. Oh, now it's a problem. Now we want to change the rules back. Now the standards have to change because it was different when we did it. I want now, to say something about this comment right here because she's she's right. Double think is really powerful. And I think one of the reasons why is that it's difficult. And when you're in the process of trying to double think, you feel really smart. Um, and I, it's taken hold at college campuses where kids are, get really high on the intelligence they feel from thinking two things at once. And people are mistaking it for intelligence. <laughs> that is a good yeah. point, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that is. That's interesting. Uh, let me ask the panel. You know, because we've talked about this now for the last three weeks um, and talking about the prospects of 
the uh, Biden regime arresting Trump. Does it happen? Do you guys think this happens? Are are we <clears throat> witnessing the changing landscape and political warfare in, in a chess time? in a chess yeah. match? Do you take out all the pawns and rooks and knights and then not? go for the throat you know do you not take out the queen i know it's a bad mm -hmm. example king queen but you get my point like mm -hmm. all these arrests all the people they're going after they're building up the case to take out trump and for mm -hmm. them to stop short just doesn't seem that that seems like a stupid strategy it doesn't seem like the way they're going i yeah. think they're just yeah. trying to scare him off i don't think they i don't think they're going to actually arrest trump unless they have to and i don't think they want to have to i think they might but my, if, if i had to guess i think they just want to scare him away from announcing a run they want to ransack his kids' room, ransack his wife's closet, like make his family members afraid so that mm -hmm. he might feel like, okay, this is not worth that. And I think right. that's really their last move beyond trying <laughs> and, to. Oh, dare I, you, PJ. I, I made the queen jokes like five minutes later, okay? So nothing's everyone, too soon for me. Everyone knows you have to take out the queen before you can get to the king. Yeah, well, without now, now, they, mm -hmm. see? But here's where here's where I disagree with you, Tom. I mean, I always disagree with Tom, but especially right now, is that I lost my train of thought because I was being to Tom. Well, I, I can say something about it. I agree with Tom. Uh, I, it's hard to say which way it's going to go there, but and I do agree with Tom in that a lot of this, um, even if they don't actually arrest him, is meant to scare away anybody who might think about working with Trump or, <laughs> you know. Yeah. saying the same things that trump says it's all meant to be like a threat like if you do this we're coming after you but, but well, you guys are assuming that you're dealing with adults and i assume that we're, we're dealing with angry petulant toddlers yeah well, that's yeah. why i think they're they're projecting and mirroring what they're afraid he would do so like they're yeah. i think they're going to go as far as they would want him to go against them they're going to set a precedent that says we we raided we investigated we looked we had a commission we dragged this out through 2024 but mm -hmm. when Trump becomes president, inevitably, in their mind, right, they're, they're planning this out, they'll be able to say, we didn't have X, Y, and Z. We never arrested. We never had a perp walk. We never did these things because that's kind of the deal they want to be cutting with the public view. If Trump takes over in 24 and then he does all those things that they walk up to the line on but don't actually commit to, then he mm -hmm. is the tyrant that they said he was and that mm -hmm. they, he is just going after harder his political opponents. They can go up to the line of punching them just like your, your your kid brother or your sister would go, I'm not touching you, I'm not touching you. And they'll do that with the arrest. They'll probe, they'll prod, they'll make him really uncomfortable, but they won't actually go that far, I don't think. And, if, and I hope they don't prove me wrong. When have they not gone over the line or gone too far in one direction? Yeah, I mean, that's I think, the thing. The Republicans are always the ones that are like, well, we don't want to do anything as bad as the Democrats yeah. do. And the Democrats continue to push further and further and further. And then the Republicans come in and they're like, oh, we're more civil. Isn't it great that uh, Hillary yeah. Clinton broke the law and we didn't arrest her? Or look, we're the good guys. We're wonderful. We're great because we don't prosecute our enemies when they break the law. So they know that's how we play the games. And and they've I've just never seen any any evidence of the Democrats going, well, that's a little too far. We want to push them, but we don't want to cross the line. I mean, we're literally talking about a party that is mainstream wanting to mutilate children and tell you that it's good and make you say it's good or you can be kicked off of social media. I think people like that have no, th th there's no line for them that they won't cross. Yeah, I think arresting Trump has been their wet dream since the very, very beginning. Right. It's how a lot of congressional well, members yeah. ran back in 20, uh, 2018 was we're going to impeach that MF or remember that? Mm -hmm. yep. right. Well, yeah, Did that it's it the impeachment stuff started like before he even after he was elected, before he actually took office, before the inauguration, there was already articles and stuff about impeaching him. So, yeah. Yeah. They, they've been wanting this for a really long time. And I think that they're so lost in their own desires, their own narrative. They're so self-indulgent. I don't think that they're thinking things through to conclusions. They, well, they, they had believe years their own lies. That's the they thought. had years worth of the walls are closing in, bombshell, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. all that. Like, they need satisfaction. Yeah. Now, with, with that, say, for example, let's just go down this rabbit hole a little, little further, if we would. They arrest them. Are they looking for that violent reaction so they can shut yes. down the midterm elections? I've been yes. at I've been adamant about for sure that is mm -hmm. the the plan. And I'm, I'm I'm not a genius. I'm not anybody that you know <laughs> that can predict this. But it just feels like it's moving in that direction. Um, as Drone Tech said, labeling anybody that's basically a Republican a domestic terrorist. Right. Like when Biden gets out there and he says that like half the country are 
the domestic terrorist and he actually in one of his speeches a couple maybe a week ago or so ago he said oh we got to save the planet so not only are you saving the country from a domestic terrorist far right white supremacist threat but you're also saving the earth and it it's like what can you justify doing it to stop this horrible inhuman threat from from destroying democracy and the earth and I, that's what should scare people i think because I think there's no limit to what they can justify doing. I well, think that's they what can go the full way. That's what they're going to do. They're going to say, again, like if, you, if they can call you a racist, they can be racist against you. And if they can call you an authoritarian or like Trump, they can call him a tyrant. Now they can be authoritarian mm. tyrants in having right. to deal with you or his supporters. Mm -hmm. And in the future, when they say, oh, there's an evil group and they are going to destroy the planet. So we have to get rid of them. They will be justified, they think, in their genocide. So right. I guess justifiable genocide will be a term of the future for the lab. Oh, yeah, totally. And you know what? Uh, I noticed it right uh, after the election that the media channels and, and uh, print started already kind of making excuses for why, oh, you're probably not going to see as many like fact checks of Biden. It's just because he tells the truth. It's like uh, Biden's a prolific liar. What are you talking about? And. Uh, that kind of evolved over the over the couple of years now where now they're saying, oh, well, we can't be objective. We couldn't possibly do that because the threat is just so it's so persistent and, and uh, existential that we can't be objective. <laughs> it's so funny. It's just like the Obama years all over again. But now they're yeah. like putting out everybody knows that they're full of shit and they're in the and they uh, they're basically just an extension of the Democrat Party. So they got to put out this sort of rationalization for it, you know. Biden's. I would assume only hardcore Democrats believe Biden's such a liar that his own White House has to fact check him on whether he has cancer or not. And the media waits to do so until the White House tells him it's right. OK. Like that, that's how fact checking works into this presidency. Yep. There's no running list of all of his lies, even though they're constant. Right. It, you yeah. Know. Uh, Brian Stelter would be having a heyday if he was counting all the lies that Biden was uh, doing. You know what's messed up about that? Not to get on, get on a Brian Stelter thing, but if you know, if you guys remember, and I'm sure you saw this when Brian Stelter uh, was first let go, there was like, and I don't know why I was getting all these tweets, but I'm seeing all these different tweets from different people in the media, like, oh, we're losing a, a great hero in the media and all this sort of thing. I every time I saw one of those, I would ask them, and a lot of some of these people, that you know, they work for the Washington Post, NBC, different networks. Um, they weren't getting like a lot of response, so I, you know, I know they saw my response, but I would ask. You know, show me a single example of Brian Stelter holding Democrat Party power to account. You never get a response ever. Well, you don't have you know? to. I mean, he doesn't have to do that. They don't ever step out of line. And that's why he called his show Reliable Sources, because that's he always proposed the reliable source. I'm wondering where we're going to get our reliable sources now that he's been fired. <laughs> it's hilarious seeing the meltdown on Twitter uh, of people thinking everybody calling CNN now a far right network. And they're saying it's Fox Light and stuff like that. Like, really? Like. <laughs> Especially after Trump had put out on Truth Social, he might need to start backing CNN if uh, Fox continues down the path of never uh, Trumpers and rhinos. Well, I hope he's saying that tongue in cheek because I don't want anyone to think for even a second that CNN might have a change of heart, might turn around and say, oh, you know, on second thought, we're with you guys because uh, unless there's some kind of you know stroke of miracle of genius of whatever that the new CEO has, the new owner has my suspicion is they want to become like a newsmax like hey we'll act like we're on your side we'll even you know cross the line that fox won't cross sometimes but at the end of the day they're still going to be controlled opposition they'll act as the punching bag when they need to they'll act as the scarecrow when they need to and uh it's right, katie said it is katie said hi katie. katie hi hi everybody <laughs> hey, I katie. Just want to say hi. <laughs> did you want to sit down hey. with me for a minute okay well hey we all love so katie. yeah sorry <laughs> I'm reporting here live from BasedCon, so for people confused about what's going on. Um, yeah, you should tell us about that. How's I it been? I will. I will. I want to make one point about what you're just saying. Do you think it's a form of gaslighting, though, this idea that CNN is moving further right and like uh, th like CNN and Fox News are coming into this new center where they're like this mainstream, like not nonpartisan media. But what's really happening is CNN went crazy, crazy far left. Fox News went far left. And now they can meet in the middle and they can be, look, this is the middle totally. of the country, but the middle of the country would be far left of 10 years ago. It, it seems like a form of gaslighting to be, to, to lie to everyone and be like, look, the media is fine. Now we went crazy, went to the opposite sides for a little while, but now we're back in this very neutral center area, except, you know, it just happens to be communist essentially. Like <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm mad, that's a much better way of explaining man. it than I did. 
It's the ink sock party. It's like what they're making. Right. And, yeah, and, exactly. If you see 1984 with the two hands like merging and it's in sock, that's yeah. like what's happening. I've noticed, and I, and that's so like cliche too, but man, there are so many similarities to that book and like right. things that are happening now. Hey, it's yeah. crazy. Hey, do you guys remember that uh, journalist that was murdered over in Turkey? You know, Kosoki and uh, the, all the mainstream media press were outraged that uh, Trump enabled this murdering of this uh, righteous journalist who is holding power to account over yeah donald saudi jr arabia. himself donald jr himself went to saudi arabia with the prince and hacked up jamal khashoggi that, all that's by right. I, that's what i heard that's right. i want to i want to ask they, both it this. was on it was right after their uh triceratops hunting tour <laughs> Is it is it fair to say that fox is far? i don't watch fox but i got the sorry, feeling that sorry. they were i'm not saying they're pretty far center away. Eh. well but my point is if they're considered the right the the, the extreme bounds of the right and CNN is, and they're going to both come in and be like, okay, we're not going to be so right wing. We're going to be trying to be centrist, and they're going to be trying to be centrist. Mm -hmm. Fox News is not right wing; they're just not like they're they're at best centrist with with a George Soros yeah. backing and a lot right. of leftist like rhino bullshit. So I would put them the in idea center. that these are the bounds, these these are the goalposts, right? Fox News mm -hmm. is on the right, CNN's on the left. It just happens that the entire that they went like this, and then they all went like this, right? And that's supposed to be center now. That's yeah, the I gaslight. See what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. What do they call that? Uh, the uh, Overton window. Right. The Overton, Overton window, window has yeah. shifted. Yeah. Yep. And this, so I, that. Go ahead, Abby. I was thinking about this the other day. People, people like to say, "Oh, they're saying the quiet part out loud." They're saying the quiet part out loud. At least they're saying the quiet part. Out loud. No, they're not. The Overton window just shifted. There's yeah. still a quiet part. It's just way worse than the thing they're saying right. out loud. It's just Maoist now instead of yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. When you yeah. when you have Fox News featuring. Uh, Oh, the the tranny from uh, California. What's her name? His name? Uh, Olympic uh, Caitlyn Jenner. Jazz. Bruce. Yes. Jenner. Yes. Oh, uh, as Jenner. as a paid uh, consultant or a paid uh, person that comes on to give their. But they're not uh, left wing guys. They're not <laughs> left wing. <laughs> well, did feature, you guys see? Then they featured a uh, a, a glowy review about a kid transitioning as well. I believe that they had yeah. that on one of their oh, uh, yeah. online articles. That was weird. That was really yeah, bad. that was really weird if too. That's right wing now. Then yeah, I'm sorry, you're you're just wrong. Yeah. It's not that's, right. You wing. Know, something about that, uh, Frank, that you were talking about that Fox News did. Uh, something I found very strange about that, and I don't know if you guys saw. You probably did on Twitter the picture of the uh, the girl that got the her. It was like a 13 year old girl who got yeah, the uh, forget, uh, what double exactly? mastectomy. mastectomy. Yeah, and uh, she they're standing in front of a a little poster that says like, "Eat uh, the teats." No, no, no. It was like uh, be the real you or something like that or yeah. be yourself. And it's like you're not being yourself. And then the interview that you're talking about on Fox News, the mother who was like this Christian, she's like, oh, she's being the, uh, she's being the way that God made her. And it's like, but that's not the way that God like, what are you yeah. talking about? It's, I've that's said this so many opposite. times. Yeah. I was like, born this is this Orwellian, way. man. Jesus. I was born this way. That's why I need surgery to be this way. Right. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I need to stop my normal biological processes and mutilate my body to become who I'm really supposed to be. Right. Yeah. Then we had that one segment. Oh, we have a. Uh... Thank you, Waffle Salt. Thank you. Thank you. You know what? Maybe a better visual image of this is a slinky. You, you know, like Fox News stays where it's at and the slinky gets pulled this way and then you mm -hmm. let go. And it looks like it came back to the center. It just happens to be over here because of which side you let go of, you know? Right. Like the well, whole thing shifted. Can that's I ask political you relativism. Everything? Yes. Exactly. And that's why I'm going to say this right now, just as a, I'm going to lay it out and then I'll shut up. If you're in the middle knowingly, then you don't have my respect. Like you can't be mm -hmm. in the middle and say, well, I can see why they say this. And so I can go either way. Like if you know the evil that is represented and it is right now on the left, it could be on the right in the future. Who knows? But right now that evil that's trying to corrupt the world is coming from the left. And if you are knowingly a bridge to it by just being the happy middle and you know what's over there, and you're allowing these people over here to get that, then you know that's that's what I have a problem with Fox for. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Have you guys? Did you guys happen to see? Uh, and I would ask you, uh, Major Garrett. You guys know who he is? A former Fox guy. Yeah. He's I on uh, CNN, I think now. Uh, so he was a guy who his whole persona is that he's a centrist, and yet mm -hmm. he tweeted out the other day he's got this new book coming out called The Big Truth, which is Orwellian when you hear the rest of it. But he put out this tweet saying that the 2020 election was the uh, the best election in American history or, or the most democratic election in American history. That's what he said. And, and the book is called The Big Truth. And, 
you know, I made the point that we know for a fact now that the FBI, if uh, just this one fact, the FBI, you know, they helped uh, suppress uh, news that was bad for Biden. We know now for a fact that they did that to help Biden's chances. And we know for a fact now that they were telling they were ordering their agents not to investigate Biden for that reason. And we know, you know, Zuckerberg said that, yeah, the FBI came to him. So they definitely, without a doubt, uh, influenced the election. So how can you mm-hmm. possibly call that? And he's supposed to be mm-hmm. the centrist guy. So I, uh, I will say that's the new center. Just on, on Fox's behalf, that for a long time, media tried to be unbiased and, and really valued, like deeply valued the idea of being unbiased. And I think that Fox is still not because they're not actively refusing to hire liberal people the way that the other places are you're getting people who are putting forward these stories like the transition story and and putting forward awful stories because they're not doing what cnn's doing which is really really awful and i i understand why that's difficult to respect and i also still kind of respect it like they're still trying to hold on to this uh, old ideal I, where they're I, they're not discriminating i disagree i don't think that there is actual i don't think that the idea of unbiased news has ever been true and no, I've actually been putting a show together uh, with this premise, just going back to the to Benjamin Franklin talking about this problem of mm-hmm. fake news back in 1860 or er, in 1765. <laughs> like, sorry, I said eight. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. Okay. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, I told you I was getting robbed. Um, gosh, it's so hard to do this show. Um, <laughs> Don't eat this street food. What was my point? Uh, yeah, good point. You know, somebody asked for Tim Pool earlier, and I got a Tim Pool head as a gift. So there's oh, a lot of pools I was on the wondering show what that was about. Um, yeah, no, I thought it was just cold in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> this is almost as bad as my uh, poster falling on me that one time. Uh, so you guys get to see my hat here. It's all good. Um, do you know who? Uh, do you know what Red Letter on? Media is? Uh, uh, sorry, no, I lost my point. What, Red Dude, Letter like, Media. Who's you that? look like Jay, man. I keep thinking I'm like on a stream with Jay from Red Letter Media. Okay. I'll look, look him up later. Okay. I, I want to be clear. I'm I'm not trying to defend Fox. Oh. I think that they are they've done awful awful things. I remember Abby loves I, Fox. I can... Everybody, yeah. everybody, every lo- Abby loves Fox. Fox I can understand why them and a lot of the old guard Republican people one. are still trying so hard to hold on to these old ideas and ideals that they were comfortable with and not seeing the need to shift. I I remember my point now. So the point I was going to make is that I don't I don't respect Fox or CNN for the same reason because CNN pretends to be the uh you know re- trusted reliable source and they hide mm-hmm. their bias even though it's plain to see they hide in plain right. sight msnbc have a less of a problem with because you know their left-wing bias so you know mm-hmm. what you're getting into cnn lies about it and then mm-hmm. all of the uh npcs go look cnn they claim that they're a reliable central source right mm-hmm. and the problem with fox news is that they claim to be or not claimed i mean they do they lean into the right-wing bias thing but yeah. they're not so I would rather have news media that actually just tells you, look, this is the story. I'm going to try to get it right. But mm-hmm. I'm also explaining this is where my biases come from. Well, it's an infiltration, uh, that's, move, that's, right? That's like if I if I want to be on the right and tell the right what to think, then I'm going to feign being on the right. And I'll say, mm-hmm. I'm conservative. I agree with you on the first three things you say. But then when I interject in the conversation, I'm going to say something that you'll feel like you have to agree with, too. And you won't. And it's like what you look at Fox. They say, here, we have a border crisis. It's terrible. We have this other tax yeah. issue and it's the, inf- the inflation is terrible. Hey, look at this trans kid. And so they can subvert your culture that way. And, you know, uh, drone tech made a point of, you know, they're mentioning, Hey, we're on the left. If this, this is the middle now, how can this be? No, they're going right. to bastardize the language itself. If they're going to call this the most uh, democratic that you said, 2020, they said was the most democratic. Yeah. He election. said the most democratic election in our, the most democratic election in American history. Then that's them bastardizing the word democracy as they continue to do the our democracy is just their communism and eventually if you want to tear it down you're going to have to be the guy who's saying democracy is bad as they have defined it and you don't want to be the guy on paper saying democracy is bad to them Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. i mean i think they actually believe at least some of them that democracy means democrats in power as stupid as that is i think that's where they're at Mm -hmm. no kidding they're, yeah, they're we, shifting of language is their biggest weapon. So you're right on yeah. that. They're very, yeah. very good at it because the right falls in line with their language changes. Because we're Instead just like regular normal people. Yeah. <laughs> this. Yeah. Sorry, Frank was going to say somehow. <laughs> so I'll hold my point. Sorry, Frank. No, finish your point, PJ. 
I was just going to say, this goes back to what we were talking about last week with the NPCs. The problem is that you have the NPCs on the left and they get all their talking points from CNN, who's mm -hmm. on point with the leftist talking points. Mm -hmm. And when you have the NPCs on the right getting their talking points from Fox News, who's becoming more and more and more left, that's why we lose. Because our low information NPCs, which we have, let's not lie about it. They are feeding into, oh, well, I'm just a, I'm just a, a what would you call it? Like, I'm a liberal, but I'm not going to call it. Like, I'm, like, I'm like a soft leftist, but that makes me right wing now. And that's what the NPCs on the right believe. They hate the left, so they go to the right, and the talking points from Fox News are just leftist talking points. I, that's why we I lose. think there are a lot of really, really good people on the right. I went to a deeply conservative college, and a lot of people there have not kept up with the world. I think things are changing so fast and it's so scary that there's a lot of really good people who are very, like their spirit is conservative. Their spirit is wanting to preserve the way that things are. And be, things have pr progressed into this awful place so quickly and they haven't just caught up with it in their minds. They haven't accepted where we are because the only way, we, we can't fix this with a conservative spirit at this point. We have to have a more of a revolutionary spirit. And I thought that, think that there's a lot of really good, really old fashioned Republican conservative people who are just not there yet. Right. They're not you know, bad and, people. and that's a trap. I mean, uh, like I was talking about earlier about Biden, you know, casting us in the most horrifying light. Uh, if we go out and protest, then and I, I've always said another one of the things I always say is that the only legit one of their rules is that the only legitimate protest is one that is advancing their agenda, you know. So <laughs> if uh, if we go out and protest, it's obviously going to be demonized. They're obviously going to crack down on us. You know, it's just going to lead to them further. Like we're in this weird, like Chinese trap or something that no matter what we do, yeah, it's the wrong move. Almost. We yep. just got a new super chat IRL for the first time in the history of the last American podcast. <laughs> $5 super chat. Yes. IRL. That's amazing. Uh, it's going into the cup. There's a drink for uh, Mr. Zed. Thank you. Thank I you, think Mr. they call that a virtual super chat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where, where I, uh, and actual speaking, reality. <laughs> it's actual media, reality. It's weird. <laughs> sorry, go ahead, Frank. I'm sorry. <laughs> and speaking of the media, I'm talking about you know the outrage of journalism uh, when a journalist is murdered and they can blame it on Trump. Oh, well, we just recently should be one of the biggest news stories out there, but it isn't because it impacts their benefactors, right? A Democrat uh, in Las Vegas stabbed to death a investigative journalist in that city. He went to his house and lured him around the house and stabbed him to death and left him there to die in the middle of the yard and left the scene of the crime. Turns out what happens in Vegas does not always stay in Vegas. <laughs> right. And and then they try to turn it as they were questioning the sheriff about it. Are you going to condemn Trump for this? <laughs> yeah. Here's the reporter. I just linked it in, in private chat. But she, she yeah, she came on. Uh, her name is uh, Dana Resnick. Gentry, she she tweeted out Metro Sheriff uh, talks about slaying of the person says murder of a journalist especially troubling but declines to denounce former President Trump's normalization of violence against reporters. Like what? What did what, like? That's insane. First of all, but like what? How did he normalize violence against reporters? That's ridiculous. well because she she's referring to when Trump would call them the enemy of the people. Right, but Brian Stelter did that to Fox News like every night, like. That's another, you know, they always, they always uh, use as a it's shield. It's okay when like, they do it. Some, well, they always use as a shield that like there's threats. Like you saw with the children's hospital thing. Oh, they're getting threats now. Uh, it's probably the lies. FBI, most of the, time. the FBI became victims. Right. Yeah, exposure right. Oh, is now they're victim. making them danger. Right. Did he take that, the super chat? Yeah, we just lost our first IRL <laughs> super chat. No. No. <laughs> Show's going off the rails. I apologize. <laughs> Sorry, where were we? Hey, Obama. Do you guys remember Obama targeted journalists? He did. I was uh, going. I was going to uh, say that. Yeah, yeah Michael Anita Hastings. Dunn. Go ask Anita him. Anita Dunn, his, his communications director, actually, li like, literally declared war on Fox News. Like she said that we're declaring mm -hmm. war on Fox News. Was that not normalizing, like, inciting violence against? Box? Of course it was, you know. I'm also like, jailed more journalists. This is, this than is the situation we're in. Or like Jim Acosta being as smug as he is, that's normalization. Oh, of yeah. What would be violence against oh, a journalist. Remember when <laughs> Jim Acosta was caustic by the uh, White House uh, aide when she uh, tried to take the microphone away back from him and how they tried to play that up and him being the victim of all of that? Yeah, he hit yeah. a girl's arm. 
He cried. Yeah, Andy No. Andy No. That's a great example. Yeah, he actually got attacked, and yet he's still like, it's not like the media was like, oh, Andy No was attacked by Antifa. That never happened. Yeah, are they just an idea, like, though? I thought that's how they are. They, they, they're not real. We'll right. talk about they're or, not real, but they're good, actually. Right. They're not real, but they're just anti-fascist. Right, yeah. That's what they always say. But Antifa, it stands for anti-fascist. You know, I always tell people it's like it, 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 Antifa, at least the Antifa in this and what we see in America here, it's like <laughs> if the Nazis were to get together and start a group called the good guys. And then you're like, well, the Nazis are acting like they're going out and doing the mobs and beating people and burning stuff and making people put up the fist. Oh, uh, no, no, no. They're the good guys. You yeah, what do you stand against the good guys? The good guys are out every night. Right. We love them. You, wait, wait a minute. You're saying you got a problem with the good guys? Or like the proud Whoa. boys? What are you, not proud to Whoa. be a boy? Sounds silly. Right. Well, That's exactly what it is. What's up? Says off. I will read this one because it's such a big super chat. Uh, right now, it says off subject, but to our brave armed forces, 9 11 uh, Eve, I thank you for all of your guys' services. Yeah, this one's Amen. for all the people we lost on 9 11. Absolutely. Which apparently, no, no, uh, generate, uh, I don't know which generation. They don't know anything about it. I just saw uh, Generation that. Z. Yeah, generation. They, they don't know anything about 9 11. They, they can't even tell time. So I don't know what's wrong with these people. Well, if you ask El, uh, Omar, some people just did something. That's all. Some right, people did right. something 21 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you so much, well, Waffle Salter. We will address that at, at the end for the last call as well again. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, and that you know that does remind me. Uh, we got about fifteen minutes left before Drone Tech gets out of here for uh, the evening for uh, joining us tonight at the bar, at the pub. Is that we are on the anniversary of nine eleven? I didn't really kind of uh, wrestle with that until just now when I saw that super chat come up. I knew tomorrow was nine eleven. You know, remember last year at this time, the whole reason Biden wanted to quickly exit Afghanistan so he could sit there and take credit. For ending the war in Afghanistan on the anniversary of 9 11. Yeah. It's it really, really disgusting. I, I work with I work with combat veterans. That's my I work for a nonprofit that helps combat veterans. Mm -hmm. And it's it, it seems like every year it gets harder where these guys are looking back on everything that happened and kind of the results of it and how meaningless it was in the end and just really, really struggling. So Keep yeah. them in yeah. your prayers, especially on 9-11. I would, yeah, I would you, have, also... you have like that and you have everything else going on in the military where, yeah. you know, they're, they're focused on white rage and, and mm -hmm. pronouns and things like that. And you're finding that nobody's joining. They're, they're, they're having a real problem with re retention. Mm -hmm. And then you have, yeah, you have Joe Biden leaving people behind and, and apparently nobody really cares because it's a Democrat. Yeah. Yeah. My daughter just got a text message from a army recruiter uh, today. And she responded back, uh, when you guys decide to go ahead and stop prioritizing trans agendas, maybe I will consider joining the military. But until then, no, thank you. Yeah. So I would I, say I would say there's a, there's another group that I feel like we should also try to remember on 9-11. Mm -hmm. But uh, at this point, what what difference does it make? Uh, you know, no, you know what I'm talking about in Libya. We lost those people because uh, of Hillary yeah, Clinton. Benghazi. And, uh, Benghazi. Thank you. I was yep. struggling with the name. But uh, yeah, so that's another one. That one happened on uh, 9 11. I think some people forget that. So it did. Wow. That's did right. it. as well. Hmm. Yeah. I did. I did forget that. Yeah. Remember, it happened uh, right it was after that. Because it was 9 11. Because it was. Because they said it was a, in response to a video and they were pro and they originally said it was yeah. protests because of 9 11. They arrested they took that, back. that guy. They arrested the they guy. Arrested they arrested him. Yes. The video. Yes. They did arrest him. Does a has anybody ever These heard of These people are guy such again? authoritarians. More journalists <laughs> so arrested crazy. under Obama. That dude Remember, they it. tried to arrest people for memes. Like they were sending police yeah. after people for memes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this one's important. Let's do this one. Okay. As an immigrant from Moldova, I appreciate the freedom that this country offers me, and I will fight to keep it this way. God bless you all. God bless you. God bless you. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Absolutely. And another one. Same. Oh wait. Nope. I was wrong. I got confused. Well, now somebody's you know, gonna I... buy a super chat to make Abby not a liar. <laughs> That you know, I have a, my old my old boss. He's uh he actually grew up in the Soviet Union, and then they moved over here sometime in the eighties. And they actually, when they came here, they were Democrats. And he was telling me how over the years <laughs> that they lived here, 
that changed because he said they more and more were like, this is what we fled from. We. <laughs> Yeah, you, you hear that uh, in South Florida as well with the Cubans that are over here uh, that escaped Castro. They continue to – I had this uh, gentleman I worked with in uh, when I was in grocery retail. He worked for Frito-Lay. He would come in. His name, was, his name was Willie. He was a Cuban who fled from Castro. He's an older guy. He's just a workhorse, and he's like, Frank, he's like, I don't know why people cannot see that the Democrat Party is exactly – the way the Castro's uh, goons and, and the political party is over there. They are the actual communists. And and nobody, you know, they're like, oh, no, no, they're not. But they are. They, they truly are. They are the party of authoritative uh, political discourse. Authoritarianism, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Hey, second, I'm going to hold up my own that bargain, chat. and I'm going to show my balls now. Oh. <laughs> uh. This stream, I don't know. I don't think I've had enough to drink yet, and you have not bought me dinner. So, uh, yeah. second, uh, second IRL super stream, uh, super chat, by virtual, the way. virtual super chat, super chat. What do we call it? it right. yeah, there we go. There we go. You know, and it, but the people that flee these countries that are ruled under those uh, types of tyrants mm -hmm. can spot these people within the political system from a mile away. They're like, Yeah, yeah. That, that's what I escaped from. Yeah. Do you remember that guy, uh, Caesar, was his name or something? Uh, he spoke at the uh, Republican National Convention. Oh, and, the Goya uh, uh, CEO. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 And he spoke about how, hey, we came here and we were fleeing these kind of policies. And he was totally right. One thing that didn't get much attention was the Democrat National Convention that year. If you go back and watch, they had uh, this kind of border. Uh, that would appear when people were speaking and it had communist symbols on it. It had like the communist raised fist on it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I remember. Like, how, how do you think like people who, f who, you know, escape that feel when they see that, you know, it's yeah, and then, then, then they're called, then they're called white supremacists. <laughs> <laughs> they're right. minorities who are white supremacists. I was just watching a whole thing uh, on Twitter earlier with somebody, you know, this whole black panel that was on there. The black women were saying that the black men were enabling white supremacists in this country because they weren't going to be voting for Stacey Abrams. Right. Well, that's the same thing with the Asian violence, the stop Asian violence. It, 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 to this day, if you do a search for stop Asian violence, you're going to find all this stuff about how like white people are the reason that black people are attacking. Just don't Asian look people. at the FBI statistics. Yeah. Right. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah. Don't look at the DOJ. You don't want to see. Right. You don't want to see that. Yeah. You know, and, and really moving forward, can we really believe starting? You know, in the next few years, can you really rely on the statistics that the FBI will be providing out? Everything they will be classifying will be white supremacist uh, attacks and things. Right? Yeah, just, just yeah. a few bad actors. The FBI is wonderful. They've always been great. It's just like one guy. Come on. Okay, Sean right. Hannity, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ooh, like, yeah, I, I want to punch my own face after saying <laughs> um, that. Sean Hannity has done really, really great things for the company I work for, so I'm going to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> Don't tune into my channel, then, because I got a lot of Sean Hannity videos. <laughs> <laughs> I would never. I'll tune in oh, later. Man. Sean Hannity was better when he had combs. I, I, liked, I liked the show back then. Did you really? Oh, yeah, I watched it back then. I was in the Air Force in those days, and yeah, I loved it. Yeah, that was one of I, my remember, shows. I, I was uh, I remember uh, one of my friends, his uh, his grandpa would always have uh, the, that show on. It was always the Sean or uh, Sean and Combs or whatever his name was. Alan Combs. I remember Alan he passed Combs, away. Yep. But yeah. yeah, he would always have that uh, opposing viewpoint on there. It was almost like your crossfire. Just yeah. About. Yeah. It wasn't as good as crossfire because Combs was always kind of I always felt kind of weak, you know, C crossfire was awesome. I, I love that show back in the day, too. You couldn't have that show today. When, when Tucker was on. Oh, yeah, no way. It's almost like we're all in this river. And it was it was a really calm river at the time. And there were a lot of good people. And then we were all allies. And Sean Hannity was right there. Fox was there. And then the current really just picked up. And some people didn't notice. And they drifted super far left. They just drifted. Like, they didn't intentionally go over there. And some of us held on. And now we're like, what? Uh, uh. Where I are think you? It was, I think Abby, it was can a... I jump in here a second? Yes. My whole channel's name is America Floats based on something similar, and I can tell you that was a bad premise. Yeah, that's what I was going to Oh, on. Yeah. That was <laughs> a bad what premise, you said? Yeah, yeah. The, that was a, the, the river thing. I, I, I'll tell you from a water-based experience, I'll just tell you that was tough. We got to find another way to say that. I assumed it We're was all in a river. like a Stephen King <laughs> reference to it or something. Okay. 
okay. We all float. We all float. We all float, we all down, float here. down here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. So I mean, with with uh, this uh, revelation that took place yesterday with Bannon talking about how there were fifty Trump uh, allies homes raided or served with subpoenas yesterday, it was just you know it just is paving that way. It's paving that way. Somebody said that the Biden administration has created a super highway over to Rubicon. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We saw like the beginnings of that. I feel like during the, uh, when the IRS was targeting the tea party and all that, I remember watching those hearings and none and of them went I, to jail, by the way. Yeah. And you know, I remember watching the hearings and they were questioning, um, not learner, but, uh, the head of the IRS, I can't remember his name, but they were questioning him about retrieving emails of Lewis learners and other people. He, and he said, Oh, uh, I, I don't think we can provide that. I believe those hard drives crash. So we can't, we can't provide that. And uh, there was a, there was a backup like company that was working for them at the time called uh sun soul or something like that. And it was like ultra redundant backup kind of thing. So that never could happen. And I just remember I, I was, I was working it at the time. And I remember thinking just like, that is so like bullshit that this high ranking guy is up there during these hearings saying something that's so obviously a lie and obviously like trying to cover up, you know, what they don't want you to know. Yeah. And, and it's just like, you know, when that took place, I remember Obama is like, oh, I just heard about that on the news today that the IRS was targeting uh, Tea Party members. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I just read that. Oh. oh, Obama's got nothing to do with it. Yeah. He's got nothing to do with yeah, anything he, unless he, it's good. Uh, then he did oh, it. Yeah. Exactly. I just got a sandwich full of, of uh, peppermint bark. So <laughs> you can see that. so oh, weird. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's a party over here, guys. You guys are missing out. BaseCon 2022, I'm telling you. <laughs> Come to BaseCon 2023. It, it, it goes right back to the questions when they were asking Kareem Jean-Pierre about, you know, what did uh, Biden know about the raid? And they're like, oh, we just found out about it uh, in a thing. Oh, when, oh, it, yeah. And when the reports come out with all of the uh, discovery that's coming out with the judge that's overruling, it shows exactly the Biden regime, the Biden himself, uh, gave the okay for all of this to start uh, taking place. Of course place. he did. Of course he did. Because it doesn't take place unless he says it takes place because the DOJ is a, is an extension of the White House. It's always right. been that way. Right. right. He's commander in chief. Yeah. <laughs> If he anybody wants, C- and you got those Democrats. Oh, the uh, the DOJ has to be a up in a, or where is it a uh, separate unit of the White House? No, it doesn't. It's always been that. It falls under purview of the president. The president tells the DOJ head, the Attorney General, who to investigate, who to target, and who to take out. At, at least well, when Obama Bill Barr was, was heading it, you remember they were all saying it was just an arm of Trump's White House. Yeah, at least Obama was honest when he called Eric Holder his wingman. Mm-hmm. Right. Yes. You know. <laughs> Yep. It, and that's one thing I will always give credit for the Democrat Party. They, they're they not afraid to use power when they have it. Right. And that's well, that is why I said what I said earlier. I think that they know that they will use power when they have it and that Republicans generally won't. Yeah. They, they basically have nothing their, to fear have from like it, People though. like Lizard Graham right. uh, leading, you know, I'm going to uh, send them a strongly worded letter tomorrow about their conduct. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. They have nothing to fear from doing it. Only we do. <laughs> that's how it's always been like we will for so long we just turned the other cheek while they were ramping it up and then finally they're like oh we're gonna start doing what they do oh boom january 6th now that's a propaganda you know effort for the next two years three years or whenever uh, however long they need it my it's favorite gonna be meme, burned into the brains of americans my favorite yeah. meme is of these two guys being shot in front of a wall is like a uh shooting and one guy's like can you imagine if republicans did this right yeah <laughs> that meme oh yeah uh, could you imagine? Yeah, that's yeah. what we're always doing. It's because yeah. we're we're like the sane, rational people who are like, "What's happening? You see what's happening? Uh, this isn't right. You see that?" But the other side, it's like that thought process is not at all like they don't care if we stay united. They don't care if they have to throw us in the gulags. It's like none of that. One matters. side's playing to win, and that's the problem, right? And yeah. we're playing as like good people in good faith who love our country, love our fellow Americans. We want to. We want us all to be united. We don't. Yeah. We don't hate people for their skin color or any of that stuff. That's another like huge disconnect. Is like the picture that they create of us is totally off. I mean, I'm not saying there aren't people like that out there, but I don't think most of us are like that. You know. Right. Yeah. yeah. No. And Jesse Kelly is right when he says things like 
uh, governors and red states should be authorizing state police to start raiding homes of Democrats. And you will see this stop really quick when they start hitting home. Yeah. Suddenly the rules will change again, just like it always does. I mean, yeah, you just go Republican, Democrat, Republican, Democrat administrations. The media changes on a dime. Mm-hmm. And suddenly the things that mattered before don't matter anymore. And that's the I mean, I, that's what I always tell people is that the media really is the crux of a lot of our problems because they are supposed to be the check on power. They're supposed to be the ones holding them accountable. If they're not doing that and they're only holding their political opponents to, to those standards, then it's like we're not a democracy anymore. And, I, you know, we can't yeah. it can't continue. We cannot continue united in that environment. Right. right. No, and you're right about that. Then it's just the way uh, it, it continues to be. And it's, you know, the media does drive a lot of that force of division and hostility and uh, fanning the flames of whatever is taking place, if it's race, class warfare, yeah. or even trying to uh, uh, demonize you for wanting to drive your car because it's uh, horrible in the environment because you refuse to eat the bugs and sleep in the pod. Yeah. If you got Hollywood and the media aligned against you, then you're you've got a big problem, and that's that's what we face right now. Because the media uh, and Hollywood together they create this you know narrative. And if you turn on network TV and watch the shows that are on network TV, they're all driving those narratives. Mm-hmm. So uh, your average simp or whatever person who's not really involved and really trying to figure things out on their own, those people fall prey to all this easily. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I think too, people who are not very online, people who are you know actually living healthier lives than a lot of us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, the little bit of information they do get is from Fox, and just they don't even realize that's that it's my not point good about the NPCs. Anymore. Yeah, they, yeah, they get like this much information, and the information continues to slide left, and they just assume mm-hmm. that that's the Republican response. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and or I don't, I don't even think response. it's fair to call them NPCs. I think there's a lot of really, really not every. I people. didn't mean that ever, for everybody, but I'm just saying like. In no, I'm, I'm just I'm just trying to say I, I do think that like this is something I woke up to a, a couple months ago where like there's really, really thoughtful, good people who just have an information problem right now. Mm-hmm. And I think rather than getting really mad at them and, and saying, I don't respect Low information that voters. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It, it's Rush. it's, it's not Rush. even that they have like not a lot of education. It's just that they haven't realized yet that the sources they used to trust are no longer trustworthy. Yeah, They just haven't They're, realized it yet. They got a long way to go, too. Yeah, yeah. And we <laughs> have to help them. We can't just, like, vilify them. Like, we have to bring right. them along, give them a reason to come along. Right, it, but it makes it harder when the, the sources they're getting their news from are constantly telling them that anybody who says something that mm-hmm. isn't with that, what they're saying, those people are, you know, white supremacist Nazis yeah. and all this stuff, so... Yeah. Oh, I tough. couldn't possibly agree with that person. I'm not a Nazi. I'm not a semi-fascist, you mm-hmm. know. Exactly. Yeah. It's been a fantastic time having you uh, join us tonight, Ryan. I know you got a lot of stuff you got going on that you got to go take care of, which is I'm glad you were able to give us at least an hour of your time to talk about the hypocrisy yeah. and, of course, all of the all the uh, gaslighting that takes place uh, in our media every day and in politics. And just real quick, you got about a minute. Why don't you go ahead and let everyone know where they can – continuously find you and your content yeah um i I would say the main place is youtube find me on there uh drone tech d-r-o-n-e-t-e-k i'm also on uh bit shoot and rumble uh i'm on twitter as well but i'm constantly who knows how long i'm before i have to start to account there but uh yeah you can find me there uh i upload videos pretty much daily shorts uh all dealing with media hypocrisy media bias um and just how all sometimes i try to do it with humor Sometimes they're serious videos. I try to change it up. So uh, if you're interested in that, and uh, you should come check me out. All right. And the link is down below, guys. You guys can go check him out. Go subscribe to him. As I know, he's been in the chat um, numerous different times. Make sure you go give him a subscribe and go watch his stuff. He has really good stuff. I love drone tech stuff, especially his thumbnails. Those are always on point. (laughs) 